Moose, why don't we talk about something you love, something you're excited to get into, the Suicide Squad teases. Take it Yes, away. yes. Four long years I have waited. <laughs> Four long years. I'm starting to see grays waited. in that hair. You've been waiting for so long. Oh, yeah. I've got, <laughs> I've got grays. Um, okay, so uh, the folks at Rocksteady, the guys yeah. behind Batman Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, Arkham Knight, mm -hmm. one of the greatest franchises in superhero and just video games in general. You don't need to argue with me on that one because I'm correct on that one. N announced on August 7th, that they are making a Suicide Squad game. And this was long rumored. There were some, some heavy rumors from people like Jason Schreier. There were some heavy rumors from the fact that apparently WB had registered some domain names. And now here we are. It's announced. And what an announcement. They, they announced a Suicide Squad game with Superman as like the, the first initial image of the game. And that's just crazy. And then with this, they said August 22nd, DC Fandom which for those who don't know, it's going to be this big virtual event. It's, it lasts 24 hours. You essentially go to their website. You're in a virtual world that it brings you into, and there's a bunch of different areas you can go explore to see a ton of different DC news. Specifically, one is called the Hall of Heroes, where you're going to get announcements from like the movies and the games and the comics and all that stuff. And it looks like one of those major announcements that's going to happen on August 22nd during DC Fandom is Rocksteady's Suicide Squad game featuring Superman and based on rumor, potentially as well, the entire Justice League. So I don't know how that's going to go down. Oh, but that's like, going to be huge. Oh, yeah. my God. If that is true, first of all, if that is true, <laughs> what does that mean in terms of what comes next after yes. Suicide Squad from Rock City? Because could this be a precursor for a straight-up Justice League game? And second of all, my huge question here is, is this connected to the Arkham franchise? Is this going to be a continuation of Arkham Knight or take place somewhere in between Arkham City, Arkham Knight? Although I don't think that's going to be possible. There's way too much, uh, like, I don't know. That'd be really difficult for them to do in terms of the yeah. canon and all that stuff. So it probably takes place after Arkham Knight if it's in the Arkham universe. But then in that case, is Batman going to be in the game? We all know what happens to Batman at the end of Arkham Knight, or at least some people might know. Um, yeah. Well, now you know. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, he's not. He's not. Yes, I, I, I know, I know, um, I know. We're not going to ruin it. But. but but either way, either way, just uh, there's there's a lot of questions to ask about this. But overall, it's just awesome. Like I said, I've uh, for me as a content creator, the Arkham franchise means a lot to me. Um, Batman Arkham Origins and like Injustice Gods Among Us were the first superhero games that I had ever covered. And Arkham Knight was the first superhero game that like from beginning to end, from the initial rumor to the last DLC, I covered that game. It got to the point um, and I don't want to like to my own horn or anything, but it got to the point where my quote for one of the challenge maps is in the game. You can see my name in Batman Arkham Knight. It's like one of the single greatest honors of my life. Um, it means a lot to me. Those folks at Rocksteady mean a lot to me. I've met a lot of those developers and I can see that they just ooze passion about DC Comics and about the games that they work on. So whatever comes of this, I have 100% faith. Uh, that's like Rocksteady have made three incredible games, like three massive AAA games, and they've knocked it out of the park each and every time. So I'm looking forward to this. I can't wait. The thing is with these, like, I think anytime you're going into any fandom that is so deep-rooted, like, you know, Batman is in Suicide Squad, you have to kind of have that passion. The team behind it has to have that passion. They have to be fans of it. It themselves and Rocksteady has proven that um, yeah. and they put out really great games yeah. so I I also have high hopes for this game I think it's interesting well, okay I'm getting goosebumps right now because Whoa. chat we <laughs> mentioned that Caboose and I we could go all day talking oh, yeah. about superheroes and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff but like I have goosebumps I literally like, all day talking about <laughs> But having a nice Suicide Squad <laughs> have their own game, I think that's such a risky thing from a business standpoint because we know the movie didn't do so well. Well, but if financially well, it, did. it did, it did financially well. That's fine. But I mean, in terms of reception by fans, right, it didn't right. do that well, right? If fans didn't receive it that well. However, yes. rock steady, guys. Rock steady. I really do have faith that they're going to put together a story that mm -hmm. is probably going to not necessarily be the storyline from a comic. It'll probably take 
aspects uh, or like the root of the story will probably be, you know, you saw Superman there. Mm -hmm. So you have hints of what story they may be going for. Right. Well, I'll tell you, that's that's what's genius about the way that they announced it, too, because there might be this preconceived idea of Suicide Squad because of the movie and some of the some of the folks that might have a bad taste in their mouth from that brand. But to put Superman as the reveal image for a Suicide Squad game with a target on his head, exactly <laughs> <That's immediately laughs> in your head, you're like, yeah. this is not the movie. This is not what we're going to yeah. expect. This is not just going to be an adaptation of what the movie is. And we shouldn't yeah. have expected that in the first place. If you look at the Arkham franchise. They're not based on one specific thing. If anything, if they're connected to one specific thing, it's probably the animated series because there are a lot of callbacks, a lot of references to Batman, the animated series, but it's still, it's very much Rocksteady's own project. It's their own original yes. take on the character, definitely utilizing bits and pieces from comics and animated series. But no, the, the folks at Rocksteady didn't go watch the Suicide Squad movie and were like, we're going to make a game. game. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like, they, Will Smith. <laughs> yeah, and like, oh my god if will smith makes genius. an appearance in this <laughs> i love will smith but not not as but, um, <laughs> yeah. this is uh this is just it's just gonna be cool man i'm i'm all in there's also a lot of rumors out there some some things circulating that it might be games as a service it might feature some co-op i, I know yeah. that's uh that's a big buzzword right now in games and i know that some people don't necessarily like hearing you know, games as a service when it comes to games. But again, like Rock City could make a game about Batman like taking a nap. That's it'll be a 10 out of 10 game, I promise you. They just they know what they're doing. They're good developers and they're very mm -hmm. passionate about the games that they're working on. If this is the game they wanted to make, I have full faith that they're putting 110% into it. Yeah, and I've always said as well as a <laughs> As just a superhero fangirl, like I love Marvel for the MCU, everything they've done um, yep. in film, live mm -hmm. action. Uh, they just do it so well. But when you look at DC, and I think people tend to forget this if they weren't following DC from the start, they put out some amazing animated shows, decent, like really good video games. They're not even decent video games. They're really good video games. This is this is where DC thrives, right? So if we're yep. just getting another installment of that, then I think it's all gravy. What's interesting though, is that there's also a Batman game coming out. So it's like they announced this, but we also know that um, WB Montreal is producing that Batman game. All but confirmed at this point. They haven't officially right? announced it, but like but like they've Come teased on. <laughs> it on Twitter, you know, yeah. their Twitter was active with, so so we know that stuff is coming. It's just going to be interesting what the timelines will look for these two projects, yes. if they'll be linked in any way. Um, because I feel like sometimes, you know, when we're playing these franchises, we want every installment of like different games to be linked to another storyline. And that's not necessarily the best way to go, especially because they're going the Suicide Squad route. It doesn't have to be linked um, at all, right? It could be just an isolated story that maybe happens sure. in another universe. Sure. I, I'm just hope I'm I'm excited to see the character designs too, because we know they aren't going to do like the movie characters yeah. uh, designs. We're not going to see um, yeah. Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn, and, yeah. and I like that. Right? Uh, that's kind of what's appealing to me also with the Avengers game. So yeah, Paul, do you have any thoughts on this? Yeah, I'm curious. There's so much hype like coming from you two. Then I'm curious, is there any like worry surrounding the game at all? Or is it just everyone's just like, they know it's going to be good? I'm well, curious. certainly the worry, like I said, because of rumors of it being a games as a service game, that is right now for some people, their biggest worry right. about it. But I don't know, again, like it just like with everything that Rock said he's done, I can't help but not put faith in them. I know I'm sounding like, super biased or like a big rock steady rock armor, steady fanboy but, but like how can you not be right like yeah. if you played yeah. the arkham games even if you might have some of your issues with them you, there's just no doubting that through the through the console generation the 360 area era and then through the xbox one ps4 era with arkham knight they have put these consoles and they pushed them to the limit with the games that they've created and they've also provided some really great storytelling some really good yeah. writing they've took these characters and they've done them justice and I mean, no pun intended. And I don't know. I'm looking. I, I also love just it's another headed. side note before we kick to everybody. I, I also really love, although it's a back shot, they just got the straight up Superman curl, like that. Just the classic <laughs> Superman curl in the hair. That is like, I love yeah. it. I love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and that's the thing. I think when you're looking at games again that have a fandom 
space as big as this, right? Superhero games in general, there's going to be two separate audiences, right? You're going to have the gamers that may not be into superheroes as much, but they played maybe the Batman series or they haven't, right? And they're just looking Mm -hmm. for a really good game. Um, And like microtransactions or a game as a service, right, can really hurt them, right? Like they may not receive that well. However, fans like Caboose and myself, they're you know they're gonna put so much Easter eggs in this. Uh, they're gonna tease to so oh, yeah. many things yeah. that oh, they're yeah. gonna deliver that fan service. So we're gonna have another perception of why we may love it or why we don't like it, right? Um, yep. So so that'll be interesting as well. Uh, Alex, do you have any thoughts before we take some of Chat's thoughts? Oh, I was just gonna ask. Um, the story in uh, the Arkham series was that Rocksteady's like original. That's the original story, right? Or yeah, it's it's all like they they wrote it. Uh, I think the first two games were yes. co-wrote by Paul Dini, who I think mm-hmm. worked on the animated series, if I remember correctly. Oh, yes, I believe he did. Third, mm. The third game, Paul Dini wasn't involved, and some people like to attribute the third game being not as well written because of that. I still think the third game is extremely well written, yeah. um, and I think the same goes for Arkham Origins. Arkham Origins is is not made by Rocksteady, but um, it's a part of the like Arkham franchise, if you will. And mm-hmm. I think that's also a really well-written game. They're all just like, they, they handle these characters really well. They tell yeah. unique original stories while also calling back to stories that you might recognize from comic books or the animated show. Yeah. Uh, and I love that. I love that. Yeah. This kind of goes on what we talked about last week with um, Netflix shows and how they adapt video games, right? And uh, yeah. we're kind of seeing, to my point last week. Oh, yeah. Where they're taking these beloved characters, <laughs> they're introducing new characters of that universe into these main storylines, and they are still great. They are still good because they're keeping, I think, the characterization of these characters intact. And that's, as a fan, what I look to when I'm seeing my favorite superhero in a new uh, game, movie, uh, cartoon, whatever it is, right? I, I want to see that how this character acts, it's exactly, or it's very true to the characterization. Like, even the Harley Quinn, I know, Alex, we were talking about this before, but the Harley Quinn show... I really love that show and they could have done this a whole other way because of course Harley Quinn is the star. So you, you do want a characterization of the protagonist that is more complex than just a, maybe a stereotype that we might've seen. And and they've done a really good job in that show of exploring all her ups, all her downs, her craziness, Mm -hmm. while while keeping that craziness Mm -hmm. intact, right? Where it doesn't seem unauthentic to the character. Yeah. Yep. And I, I think that's like the the beauty of like having these characters and having like multiple kinds of ways to portray them, like whether it's a show, a movie, a different kind of game. It's really, really cool. And like seeing how developers, you know, like, um, you know, take that challenge and what they do with it. Well, like Rocksteady did a really, really great job, like with the Arkham series. Uh, I forgot which one I played. I think I only played Arkham Asylum. Um, mm. Like I, I don't really care about <laughs> superheroes. Sorry, no, but wow. don't don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. But I, mean, <laughs> I feel like I'm melting away I from those I words. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know what's gonna happen to me. I think Caboose might put a hat on me, or Caboose <laughs> gonna get on a week. Hitman VR. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and imagine me put my bald cap on. But- <laughs> Better watch out, Alex. <laughs> but um, but I'm still like really blown away by the gameplay and by the story. And I'm a, a very story driven person when it comes yeah. to games. So, I mean, I, like, I love that. It made me see superheroes in a different light for sure. You know, I'm curious, is there any um, specific like gameplay mechanic you guys want to see in the Suicide Squad game? Well, it's going to be um, interesting how they adapt, uh, like, that Batman multiple? detective mode, right? Because that oh, was, like, yeah. game-changing for all of gaming. You see that now in The Last of Us, right? Listen mode. That's all based yeah. off of detective mode. Um, yeah. So so it'll be interesting how they adapt that, especially, like, it's Suicide Squad. So I'm guessing you're going to play as multiple members of the Suicide Squad. Which version of that? Who knows? Um, so how those modes, like... The, the core game mechanics that we'd expect of an action-adventure game like Detective Mode, how yeah. that would adapt for the different characters, that's what I'm interested to see. Because, like, how would a Detective Mode look for Harley Quinn, right? Like, yeah. I, can't, I can't imagine that for her. 
Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd like to see like, you know, a new open world. If it's planned to be open world, I don't even know if it's going to be like a linear game or not, but like, if it's planned to be open world, I want to see, let's, let's get out of Gotham. Let's go somewhere else. You know, like why not? Why, if, if we're seeing Superman, yeah, if we're seeing <laughs> Superman, <laughs> right, right, right. Metropolis, um, why don't we get to explore so that? Sad. Why don't we get to do something like that? And I mean, if we're playing right. as a suicide squad, we're bad guys. So yeah. let's lean into that a little bit, you know? Like when, when it came to the Batman games, there was obviously the whole no killing thing. And that was an important part of the character. And, you know, you'd break a dude's arm or you'd run someone over with a Batmobile. But every time you aim on them with a detective mode, it'd say that they were just incapacitated. Like they were just yeah. knocked out, not dead. Yeah. Um, but but then they Batman, added yeah. they added Red Hood and you were straight up shooting people and <laughs> straight up killing people. So <laughs> yeah. so let's let's lean into that. You know, screw it. We're playing as bad guys. Let's do yeah. some bad things and be villains. I know again, I'm leaning into the oh whole psychopath God, side go. of me. <laughs> yeah. <There we> go. <laughs> but like let's just let's 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 play around with that and have a little fun with that and uh and really let us feel the power of playing as a villain rather and than that, a hero. That's awesome. Like, because that's something that I really did um miss from i wish they did in the movie i wish they played up the fact that these heroes are technically villains to these villains yeah. right yeah. um i want to see them perceive batman if he's in the game if he's a little you know there yeah but i want to see them perceive him as like someone who is really living in the shadows he just he's kind of a legend a myth kind of how mm -hmm. you think of the boogeyman that is batman yes. i want to see those moments right i uh, can't wait insane. to see the boss fights if we're oh, actually sure. fighting the justice league People awesome. gave Rocksteady crap. They were like, what the hell were the boss fights in Arkham Knight? And they were like, oh, you want boss fights? Okay, we'll let you fight the Justice League. How we'll about that? give you boss fights. Yeah, so I can't, oh man, if we're fighting the whole Justice League, if Batman's involved, I would love to see something where it's just straight up, he's in the shadows and like, yeah. we're right. just terrified the whole time trying oh, to, that'd be so good. Trying to but stop him. Oh, Oh, it'd oh. be so good. I cannot wait. Uh, but I want to I want to just take a couple I need to fast forward comments. 12 days. I know. Can we just <laughs> sleep 12 days and be yeah. here uh, <laughs> reacting yeah. to it? Um, so Baron Lloyd says, my theory about Suicide Squad is that guy behind the evil Justice League is the villain called Eclipso. When he corrupts people, oh. they have purple eyes and gray skin, just like Superman. And this mm. can support the fact that that this happened in oh, Suicide Squad yeah. versus Justice League comics. Yes. That's a uh, pretty Eclipso, good one. Eclipso is a pretty wacky looking villain. I could see them doing something like that, um, especially because Rock said he's definitely not shy in taking obscure characters and either putting them at the forefront or doing cool things with them in their games. Um, so I could see something like that. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I, I wonder is is it a brainwash thing that that's going on with suicide with uh, with Superman? Is that currently the running theory? I guess that would make sense. Why would makes the Suicide sense. Squad just be tasked to take down Superman? Oh, besides, true. you know, like they because they're they're bad yeah. people, but they're supposed to be kind of commissioned essentially to do good things or forced that's the thing, to right? do good things. So, oh my God, can we get a can we just get Viola Davis to voice Amanda Waller? Like, yeah, that's the yes. best thing that came from the Suicide Squad movie. Yeah. Can we just get that? <laughs> Anthony yeah. Strader says, who would your lineup be for Suicide Squad, uh, for the Suicide Squad game? Mine would be Deathstroke, Deadshot, Bronze, Tiger, Harley Quinn, Killer Frost, uh, Black Manta, Captain Boomerang, King Shark, and Cheetah. That's a really big oh, Suicide big Squad. Life. This guy thinks he's going to be like 14 <laughs> playable characters at launch. Um, yeah, Caboose, I want to hear your, your thoughts on this one. And Paul, I mean, if you've got as well. you got to go with like the heavy hitters, the most recognizable right now, whether it's because of the movies or not. I mean, Harley Quinn is starting to become very associated with the Suicide Squad. So I feel like let's get Harley Quinn in there. Uh, Deadshot as well is, is a prominent Suicide Squad member. I would love to see Deathstroke, especially because in Arkham Origins, the post credit scene of that game, which was now seven years ago, was setting up Suicide Squad from WB Montreal, and he was the first member, essentially, to have been like brought the task to. So like, yeah. get Deathstroke in there, get some unique combat with him, actually incorporate the swords this time. Don't just give him a staff. Um <laughs> And then I don't know, like th definitely I want them to pull from some of the some of the wacky, crazy, obscure characters. Like, like we'll see. Like the the new movie that's coming out from James Gunn seems to be doing that, where it's just pulling straight up from characters that are like completely obscure that nobody knows about. 
Um, but maybe like maybe like a Captain Boomerang could be cool. I'm trying to think of some other villains that have like straight up superpowers that could be fun. I don't know. I don't know. I honestly really couldn't guess who I want. I just want to see uh, a diverse, crazy, wacky cast of characters to play as. Yeah, I want them to be so different, especially if you're playing as every single one. Um, yeah. Just so that the gameplay is changed up. Very varied. Uh, yeah. Very varied. You very, then very, that varied. allows also very very varied for a very very varied <laughs> environment. Um, but that would allow for that. That would allow for every level or if it's open world, every different environment that you have to go and explore could be different. Like, could you imagine like Killer Croc? Like in being, you know, it, swimming around in the uh, Just sewers. Add, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. like that'd, that'd be, cool. be really cool to see. Uh, Paul, do you have a thought who's on that, this who's one? That, who's that fire dude? I'm so sorry. I don't watch Marvel stuff too. So oh, uh, El Diablo? <laughs> El Diablo. Yeah. That'd be sick. I've always been a big fan of like uh, adding in fire people into game. So mm. that'd be okay, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Although, like, I'm all, I'm just thinking of characters from the movie. It would be cool. Like Enchantress with the magic and all that stuff. Uh, that they ruined Enchantress fun. for me. I'm good. Oh, I'm yeah, good. I don't need to. I don't need to see Enchantress it. anymore. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> as Stealth Gamer says, speaking of DC fandom, does that mean that we could potentially see WB Montreal reveal their Batman game? I would say yes. I would say very likely. Listen, if WB Montreal was out there putting straight up teases and revealing logos and a caption for what is probably their Batman game with Capture the Night a year ago. And Rocksteady wasn't, but Rocksteady will reveal their game at DC Fandom. I think there is a almost like a negative four percent chance yes. that WB Montreal doesn't reveal their Batman game at DC Fandom. And I wouldn't even be surprised if that game comes out first before the Suicide Squad game. Yeah, I think, but, I think um, that's accurate to say. Yeah, because there's there's had, also yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. You, just because WB Montreal was teasing this beginning of the year there's been rumors so long now like i feel like it's been in development longer than this suicide squad game yeah that it yeah. just makes sense um yeah but yeah i was gonna say as well that like on august 7th there was a there was a ton of teases that came out about this dc fandom and one of the big teases that they put out was just a straight up list of names of people that are going to be at the event they had uh, robert pattinson on there you know matt reeves right. the guys who are making the batman movie um, they had The Rock, who's going to be there for Black Adam. And then on that list was the creative director at WB Montreal. Patrick Redding was on that list and he was liking tweets of people pointing it out. So I think, you know, given everything that I just said about the teasing from WB Montreal and that, and then adding on top of the fact that the guy who's the creative director <laughs> at WB Montreal will be at DC Fandom. What do you think he's going to show up there and be like, Oh, yeah, that oh, Suicide sorry. Squad this is, this is the game wrong looks room. great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, I'm just curious. You know, like, what, what do you, what do you think is going to happen? Yeah. I, I think there's a. It's just it's a lock. It's a lock. It's a I'm always the guy. I'm every time I cover this Batman game, I'm always the guy who is like, don't get too excited. Everyone keep a level head. <laughs> if you get overly hype when this stuff doesn't <laughs> not happen, like you, you <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not like me. Um, but I always try. I always try to keep, just have people keep a level head about specific things like this because there's always there's always like some random guy whose dad at works at WB on 4chan and just tells people that they got the leaks. Um, yeah. And they always get people's hopes up about this or that event where they're going to show the Batman game. And it never happens. So I'm always that guy who tries to keep expectations in check. But this is the one time I'm like, screw it. Go nuts. <laughs> get excited. Go it's happening. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's happening. It's. I, I think it's going to happen too. It, it, for all those reasons that you mentioned. Let's get to a few more of these comments before we go to a break. Uh, do you think that Suicide Squad, the Suicide Squad game, could be set with the Batman Gotham Knight game being rumored from WB Montreal? I mean, I think, yeah, I think that's what uh, Anthony is referencing here. That could be interesting. I don't know where they would place them. Like if WB Montreal's game is a Batman game and the Suicide Squad game is you hunting down the Justice League, potentially including Batman. I'm not sure like like where exactly because if they were connected, it could be yeah. They, then I feel like. They would have to have like it would that be like thread, the, you know, or connecting at the end of whichever game releases first, like I tease guess. up to the next game. They um, could do I, that. Yeah, I think yeah. that. But that's if this all happens in the same world, the universe, which yeah. we don't know yet. Um, here we go. We got. I want Deathstroke in the Suicide Squad. Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel you, Anthony. Um, what do you guys think? Do you guys think Ed Boon is going to be going to DC fandom? That's from Stealth Gamer. 
Uh, so he's on that name, or he's on that list as well. When they put out that little teaser from DC Fandom, Ed Boon is going to be there. Um, and a lot of people, for whatever reason, think that because Boss Logic made some fan art of an Injustice 3 logo, that that somehow confirms Injustice 3, which, come on, come on, guys. We're better than this. We're better than this. Um, but I don't know. I don't, th- I don't think Ed Boon's going to talk about anything too big. We'll see, though. If Listen, if Injustice 3... A new Batman game and a Suicide Squad game all get revealed on the same day within 24 hours. Send the ambulance because like, Caboose is going to have a heart attack. Call time. an ambulance <laughs> for me because we're going to, I'm going to have heart palpitations. It'll be a problem. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think Injustice 3 is going to get revealed. I don't think we're going to get Injustice as well. Uh, which magic caster would you guys choose from Suicide Squad to fight Superman? That's from uh, Baron Lloyd. Well, I mean, Enchantress. Yeah, I think Enchantress would probably be the best one. Um, yeah, I feel like Enchantress would yeah. be cool. Yeah, you know, I feel that too. I totally know who that is. <laughs> yeah, I like you Alex, know. how you, you know Alex, that's my character. favorite. Oh, no. I'm, I'm <laughs> kind of upset with you right now, Alex. We're, <laughs> we're, our friendship I'm is trying, like murky I'm waters trying. right now because <laughs> we had uh, Lawson in chat say people in spandex hitting other people <laughs> in spandex. Boring. Um, and Alex <laughs> there Alex. said, true. <laughs> what do you mean, true, uh, Alex? I think he's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I mean, I think no animals fighting other animals that you capture. And what if yeah, the animals are wearing them. spandex? Yeah. That'd be better. <laughs> that would be kind of better, actually. There there are kind of like spandex wearing oh, Pokemon, come on. actually. <laughs> Okay, I just can't take any more of this. Right. So you know what? We're going to have to uh, really put this one on the table and see what happens at DC Fandom. For now, we're going to take a break, and we're going to we're gonna come back uh, here real soon. So don't go anywhere, guys.